Hello and thank you for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Now to begin, tragedy struck once again this weekend as a bomb exploded near a popular natural spring in the West Bank, leaving 17-year-old Rina Schnerb murdered and her father and brother gravely injured. And even more worrisome is that Israeli and Palestinian authorities both believe that Schnerb's death was not the act of a lone wolf, but rather an elaborate terrorist cell. Additionally, Palestinian security officials are concerned that this organized terror network poses not only a threat to Israel, but to Palestinians as well. So what happened? Well, it all began on Friday when an explosive was set off near the Dani Spring outside the central West Bank settlement of Dolev, and 17-year-old Rina was pronounced dead at the scene, while her brother and father sustained critical injuries. Though Schneeb's father, a 46-year-old rabbi, has since pulled through into stable condition, and despite having a piece of shrapnel in his stomach and a broken hip, and despite having a piece of shrapnel in his stomach and a broken hip, Rabbi Schneeb spoke to reporters from his hospital bed on Friday to mourn his daughter as a martyr of the people of Israel. But at any rate, the blast led to a comprehensive manhunt resulting in the arrest of three Palestinian suspects, though for now it's still unclear what the suspect's connection to the attack was. And meanwhile, some members of the international community swiftly condemned the attack, with UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process Nikolai Mladenov tweeting that the incident was shocking and heinous. And similarly, United States House Majority Leader Steiny Hoyer and even freshman Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib also condemned the attack. Still, though, Israel's UN ambassador, Dani Danon, said that more voices must cry out against such acts of violence. And in a letter, he called out UN Security Council President Joanna Ronica for not yet speaking out against this attack on innocent civilians at all. Then finally, sadly, this is only the latest in a series of terror attacks coming out of the West Bank. Earlier this month, two teens were critically injured in a car ramming, and another was stabbed to death among other attacks. Moving on, IAF planes hit several targets near Damascus Saturday night in what Israeli leaders are calling a preemptive strike. This after intelligence reports strongly suggested that Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, was planning to launch unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, armed with explosives as sites in northern Israel. Additionally, the army reported that the IRGC planned to use Syria as a launch pad for the attacks under direct order of the Iranian Quds Force commander Major General Qasem Soleimani, hence the location of the Israeli strikes. In fact, IDF spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus explains that the Al-Quds Force in conjunction with Shiite militias had attempted to carry out an attack on Thursday and that the IDF, which has been monitoring the plan for several months, thwarted the attack, which then led to the strikes on Saturday night in efforts to thwart a repeat of the initial scheme. But in a most unusual fashion, both the army and the security cabinet openly admitted Saturday night and Sunday that Israel had carried out the strikes, adding that the IAF would continue to attack Iranian targets of this nature in the future. However, as a result of the strikes, the IDF was placed on high alert for fear of Iranian or Hezbollah reprisals. And similarly, the Air Force is also on high alert with Iron Dome missile defense systems being deployed across the north. In the meantime, Israeli ministers, from the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to Environmental Protection Minister Zev Elkin and Foreign Minister Israel Katz, reiterated that Iran was the main actor causing instability in the Middle East and that it therefore has no immunity against such reprisals. Syrian media, on the other hand, claims that its air defenses had shot down all the missiles despite footage and still images showing what looked like large explosions in Aqaba, south of the Syrian capital Damascus. And then finally, in related news, while tensions between Iran and the West continue to heighten, the UK has similarly now sent another warship, the HMS Defender, to the Persian Gulf. This as the UK and Iran have engaged in tit-for-tat actions against each other's shipping over the last two months or so. The British Defense Ministry announced, though, that this month, Royal Navy vessels will work alongside the United States Navy to escort passing ships through the busy straits off of Iran's coast. On a related note, the Iranian regime released on Thursday footage of their new Bavar 373 missile defense system, which Iran describes as comparable to the Russian S-300s, and this at an unveiling ceremony on Iran's National Defense Industry Day. But the unveiling also comes as relations between the United States and Iran become more and more dangerous, especially as Iran allegedly used similar technology to down a U.S. drone earlier this summer. However, despite legitimate concerns over Iran's military advancement, coupled with the latest tiff between Iran and Israel, Western powers are taking the latest announcement with a grain of salt, citing how Iran often exaggerates its abilities. For example, Iran failed multiple times to attempt to launch satellites just this past year. What the West is more concerned about, then, is Iran's ICBM, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Program, which the 2015 JCPOA supposedly attempted to curb. 
and indeed it was Iran's refusal to stop its missile testing, among other more malign activities in the Middle East, that caused the United States to leave the JCPOA in the first place. Now, as the Likud looks to increase cameras in Arab polling stations, in a seemingly tit-for-tat move, the Israel Beitenu party is now calling for cameras to be installed in ultra-Orthodox voting stations too. And again, all in the name of preventing voter fraud, as Israel Beitenu party MK Oded Forer cites unusually high Haredi voter turnout and rumors of the voting undead as reasons to meet his demands. Well, this call, along with Lieberman's recent vote-sharing deal with Blue and White, has prompted those on the right to label Lieberman and his party officially as leftists. But at the same time, in the wake of the release of a potentially damaging video, left-wing groups may not find Lieberman to be liberal enough. Because while Lieberman has built up his political persona as one of fighting for secular values, a new Channel 12 News report appears to show Lieberman in 2013 speaking out against gay pride parades. In the video broadcast Tuesday night, Lieberman is seen speaking with Rabbi Shmuel Auerbach, who was a hardline member of the Orthodox parties. And in their conversation, the Israel Beitenu party head states that he supports in Israel where, quote, there won't be all these parades that they hold for all the gay festivals, end quote. So as expected, both from left and right, Lieberman is now fending off criticism for these comments, with most, like Likud's Amir Ochana, claiming that Lieberman is a homophobe or an ideology less opportunist. The Democratic camp, formed by former Prime Minister Ehud Barak, even called Lieberman the most corrupt man in the history of Israeli politics, who would sell out anyone and has never been on the side of either the secular or the LGBT people. Lieberman, for his part, however, responded to the video calling it cheap gossip dragged out of storage, intended to harm the prospect of a national unity government. That's all for now, so remember to follow us on Facebook at Israel English News and on Twitter at ILTV News. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast.